You think 7,000 RPM feels good? Wait till you feel this. 9,000. It's a number that most automakers never get to advertise in any sense, let alone engines. But the chefs at Honda have made high RPM their signature dish. This is a story that spans 40 years. Years that reinvented Honda as we know them today. That culminates with one of the most special machines ever constructed. Its design, suspension, and even the dashboard were built for drivers by drivers. It's so cool that Fast and Furious put it in their movies twice. And it not only revs to 9,000 RPM and shows off technology previously relegated specifically to race cars, but it's Honda's sports car that made the entire rest of the competition break out in sweat. This is the S2000. In order to truly understand where Honda's collective brain was when developing the S2000, we have to track the company's history back half a century, when Honda's first ever four-wheeled machines hit the streets. The early 60s was a jumping off point for Honda as we know it today. The Japanese brand had been world-renowned as perhaps the most elite producer of motorcycles, but they found themselves heading in an unexpected direction and at the demand of the Japanese government. See, in 1961, the government introduced legislation that would require car makers to build cars in specified categories, sports and specialty cars being one of the classifications. But here's the catch. The bill also said that any company not producing cars at the time it went into effect wouldn't be allowed to do so for the foreseeable future. If Honda didn't start building cars now, well, they might never have the chance. So what did certified hero and company founder Soichiro Honda do? Well, he built something so quickly and so magnificent that some of its engine capabilities have still yet to be topped. Just one year after that bill was proposed, out came the first four-wheeled Honda ever, the T360 and the absolutely adorable and equally bonkers S360. As Honda's first ever car, the S360 was a tiny two-seater with a little baby engine, a manual transmission, motorcycle-style chain-driven rear wheels, and a convertible top. Several more versions of the S360 rolled out through the years. The S500, S600, and S800. The S600 in particular gave the world those engine capabilities I mentioned earlier. Are you sitting down? Because its 606cc inline-4 rev to 9,500 RPM, making it the highest redline in any production passenger vehicle in the history of the frickin' automobile. And it did it without a pressurized oiling system. The thing used roller bearings instead of traditional metal-on-metal -metal ones. It had four independent carburetors, meaning four individual throttle bodies. It had chain-driven double overhead cams, and the block was all aluminum. It added up to an engine that displaced barely more than half a liter, and made 70 horsepower, giving it the highest specific horsepower of any production engine. That craziness paired with a simple interior, tight bolt-action shifter, and a tossable chassis created an instant classic that's becoming only more desirable by the year. And more importantly, it was a true blueprint for the Japanese roadsters that would come nearly 40 years later. Fast forward to the late 90s. Honda was about to celebrate its 50th anniversary and needed something fresh to not only give their brand a jumpstart into the new millennium, but also give car enthusiasts a reason to say Honda with pride. You see, Honda already had the Integra of Civic and Prelude, which in their own respects, had a large dedicated following. But the majority of those cars were advertised and sold as reliable, long-lasting economy cars, save a few for the spicy Type R versions. And they had the NSX too, but that was too expensive. On the cheaper end of supercars, but supercar money nonetheless. And this is where the S2000 comes in, as something not only purely Honda, but rooted in driving experience and performance for the average enthusiast. Okay, back up to 1995. The Tokyo Auto Show rolls around and Honda engineer and, I apologize in advance, Daisuke Sawai, <coughs> had been drumming up a little something he wants to unveil to the world, the Honda Sport Study model, AKA the SSM concept. And this thing was wild, even by today's standards. The body was streamlined and looked like a modern Japanese bullet train. It sported a rounded cockpit design, an open top, and a five-cylinder VTEC engine. It was something right out of a Honda enthusiast's dream, a dream that would take four more years to come to fruition. After years of development with the CRX Del Sol test mule and a deliberate move to ignore input from the marketing people, Honda had built the most focused, most Honda vehicle they could dream up. In 1998, Honda teased journalists with a name that might have been the new road-ready SSM called the SSX. What the hell? Oh, 
my god! That had a more sober looking exterior and a bizarre V5 engine. Obviously, that didn't happen, and we had to wait another year before the long anticipated S2000 hit the market. And when it did, holy god, Jesus, was this thing amazing! Though not available in the US for another model year, the new for 99 S2000 came with a lot of the goodies Honda had promised in the years past. An open top, sexy good looks, rear wheel drive, a manual gearbox. But the real headline was, of course, that sweet, sweet 2 liter inline 4 VTEC motivator under the hood, dubbed the F20C. This engine, in all its glory, is a whole other video on its own, because there's just so much to unpack with this thing. But what you really need to know about this power plant is that it's an all aluminum double overhead cam VTEC monster that revs to an absurd 9,000 RPM redline, cementing its place as a true legend in automotive history. Oh, and by the way, it sounds good too. The F20C is known for its power efficiency, getting 238 horses out of its two liters. A figure that not only bested the mechanical marvel that is the S54 and the E46 M3, but wouldn't be surpassed until Ferrari rolled out the 458. And despite its somewhat lacking 103 pound feet of torque, the S2K could blast to 60 in a decent 5.8 seconds. And you threw to the quarter mile in about 14, depending on conditions. And just like the S Roadsters back in the day, the S2000 stuck to its calling card of lightweight, high revving fun. The S2000 weighed a respectable 2,800 pounds, and had a low sloping hood making it easy to place and quick as hell on a back road. And the shifter. Honda is known for having some of the finest manual shifters in the business, and the S2000 six speed is absolutely no exception. Lifted straight from the NSX, positive engagement and quick snickety throws have only made this car more desirable over time, as good manuals, and manuals in general, continue to disappear. The standard limited slip diff's advantages are bolstered by the S2000's NSX inspired double wishbone suspension, carrying finely tuned shocks that keep those pretty wheels stuck to the ground without giving you a reason to call your chiropractor. Then there's the interior. Japanese sports cars from the 90s just seem to get it. And just like the famous Mark IV Supra and FDRX7, the S2K's dashboard wraps right around the driver, pointing all the important stuff, even the HVAC controls, right in your direction. It has a regular ignition lock, but had to actually be started with a race car inspired button. Plus, the digital cluster feels modern to this day, and looks more like a futuristic aircraft instrument than anything. Other than its premium $35,000 MSRP compared to something like the Miata's 21 and change, there was no downshot. The Type V was introduced in Japan for the year 2000, and it was the first car in the world to offer variable geometry steering. In 2004, the S2000 got a facelift. Now designated the AP2, it got updated springs and shocks, a strengthened subframe, the transmission synchronizers were now made of carbon fiber, and in the US, a higher stroke version of the F20C to improve low and mid-range torque. The new F22 C1 unfortunately knocked the rev counter down to a maximum of 8200 we've driven both, and truthfully, you can't go wrong either way. Then in 2008, Honda rolled out the Club Racer, a more track-focused, lighter-weight, aero-optimized version that shipped with a hardtop, an option previously unavailable save for the UK-exclusive GT trim offered in model year 2002 only. It all wrapped up in 2009 with the Ultimate Edition, which got special graphite wheels, Grand Prix white paint, and a host of badging and interior trim finishes. Sales for the lovable Roadster had plummeted, and any plans for a new version got scrapped in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. That being said, Honda has kept teasing us with patent filings, video game cameos, and even a few concept cars. The suspension tuning, engine personality, and open top experience made the car greater than the sum of its parts. It's a machine that reinvented what so many people thought about the Honda brand and it proved that their team were capable of much, much more than simply making things reliable and family friendly. It won all kinds of awards and accolades, and to this day is a highly respected and celebrated platform in motorsport. So what happened? Sure, there was the financial crisis, but perhaps the trouble was where the beloved S2000 fit in the laundry list of sports cars. It was priced way higher than the Miata, and it was certainly faster but it wasn't that much more affordable than Chevrolet's Corvette, which outperformed it in every single metric, except maybe at an autocross, but hell, the Corvette even got similar gas mileage. It wasn't as premium as the BMW Z3, and it didn't have the pedigree that came with Porsche's Boxster. 
So, it was too expensive to be supremely accessible, but just a little too cheap to run with the Varsity team. The S2000 was killed off after just nine years of production. Its stint as Honda's flagship sports car made a permanent mark on the segment, and made it so every enthusiast knows the initials S2K. It's a simply brilliant little machine that puts a smile on your face every time you see one. A smile that turns into a big grin as the rev counter flies right on past 7,000 RPM. It's quick, it's fun, it's dead reliable, and it's become an icon. And that makes the Honda S2000 forever an ideal car. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and go watch some of the other ideal stories we've done thus far right over here. And get subscribed to Ideal because we've got many more like it coming your way every single week. My name's Trav, this is Ideal, and thank you all for watching.